Hello everyone. Welcome to Understanding Elasticity lesson number two. You might remember in lesson one I introduced the concept of relative elasticity. It's a conceptually easy concept. We talked about the determinants of elasticity and I left you with this problem. The problem is that relative elasticity, although it's easy, relatively easy uh, to understand, it's it can't be used to make a comparison between two dissimilar products. In other words, you couldn't compare the elasticity, say, of some food item for the elasticity of energy or the elasticity for health care. Because the units are physically different, we can't compare the slopes. So what we need instead is a kind of elasticity that is independent of the units, what I'm calling unit neutral. Now your books don't really make this distinction, which I think is a big problem. They, they just say elasticity, but they almost always mean unit neutral elasticity, especially when they show you the formulas. So since they, they don't use that term unit neutral, I'm going to drop it in another slide or two. But remember, all of these mathematical formulas I'm about to show you uh, relate to unit neutral elasticity. All right, so there are three formulas, and you're probably going to have to memorize them. The first is uh, what I call a definition. That is, uh, unit neutral elasticity is simply the percentage change in Q divided by the percentage change in P. And then there are two, in the old days we called them working formulas. That monster that you see there is called the arc form, and it's the formula that you would use for actually calculating elasticity if you were given two points on a demand curve. And then there's this other formula called the point formula. This is the one that you would use if you were going to calculate elasticity and you're given only a one point, one specific point on a demand curve. So again, the definition, the arc form, and the point form. Let me move my image out of the way. There you go. Now they all look very different from each other, but they're not. They all come from the same basic root. And uh, I don't see any introductory textbooks that uh, stress that point. You probably don't even need to know. You could just memorize the formulas if you want. But I'm going to take a minute and uh, show those of you who are interested that they're all related. Even though they look very different, those three formulas all come from the same root. So uh, you can skip over this part if you want, but uh, it might help you remember them and it might come up uh, in some kind of obscure question uh, in the future. Or if you're in an upper level class, maybe you do need to know. All right, so let me see if I can get this uh, drawing tool to come up. So here is uh, the question. We have these three formulas and we want to know if they're related. So let's start with the one in the middle. The first question is, where does that crazy thing come from? Well, you might remember under relative elasticity, under relative elasticity, we were just comparing slopes. And if you think about what the definition of slope is, slope is just rise over run. And way back in your old middle school days when you first had to calculate the slope of something, you probably had a formula like this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You remember that? Remember those days? That's going to come up again in a minute. Now, of course, the slope is very different if you measure the thing. Imagine you were calculating the elasticity of gasoline. The slope would be very different if you had on the uh, q-axis gallons or instead you put it in liters or maybe you put it in tankfuls, you get very different numbers. And that's kind of the problem that we have with relative elasticity. So the way unit neutral elasticity works is it first, here let me let me fix this a little bit. So we don't have X and Y in economics, we have P and Q, so this would be P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1, or maybe you've seen it this way as the percentage change in P over the, uh, sorry I messed up, not percentage change. Maybe you have seen it this way as a change in P over the change in Q. Or back in your old middle school days it would be delta Y over delta X. Maybe you do remember that. Okay, so can you see that all we've done 
to get the unit neutral elasticity is we put this percentage sign in front because when you calculate the percentage change of something the units just disappear and then for some crazy reason we turned it upside down and I don't really know why that happened but when we get the unit neutral elasticity it's the percentage change in Q over the percentage change in P and that's where that definition comes from it's uh, very similar to the uh, formula for slope it's kind of inverted for some reason that I don't know and instead of having the actual changes in P and Q we calculate instead the percentage changes okay so I need this white space I'm gonna erase all that so that's where the definitional formula came from now the next thing I would like to show you is that the definitional formula is exactly the same well that thing there it goes the definitional formula is exactly the same as this arc form that we have over here on the left and uh, here's how you can see that if you ever calculate the percentage change in something it is simply the difference in two numbers divided by the first number so for example if the price of eggs were two dollars a dozen last week and they're two dollars and fifty cents this week the percentage change in the price of eggs would be the difference which is fifty cents the difference in the two prices divided by the first price which was two dollars and then to get it into percent multiply by a hundred so that's how you've been calculating percentage changes your entire life so let's try to apply that to economics and you'll see there's a little problem imagine you had a demand curve and you had two points P1 and P2 and then of course Q1 and Q2 and so if you wanted to calculate the percentage change in Q it would be the difference in the two Q's which would be Q2 minus Q1 divided by the first Q well there isn't a first Q there are just two neither one is first and so the way we get around that in economics is we put in the denominator not Q1 and not 2Q but the average of them so we write it like this Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2 okay so that's how we calculate the percentage change in Q okay I'm gonna circle this thing that's the percentage change in Q and you would do the same thing for the percentage change in P uh, you might stop this video and try to work it out for yourself and I'll go ahead and write it over here okay so that's the percentage change in P now when you put those two things together it looks very similar to that formula that I have up there in the top left corner except for those two twos so what happened to those two twos well those of you who are really good at complex fractions if you put that uh, that monster expression in Q over that monster expression in P you have this huge thing and those two twos cancel out they will cancel out and you're left with this formula that you see over here let me see if I can mark it the two twos cancel out so I hope you can see that the definitional formula which was percentage change in Q over percentage change in P turns out to be the very same thing as that big monster that you see over there on the left so I'm going to erase that question mark and try to get all this work off of here the last thing I want to do is show you that it's also the same as the point formula all right did I get it all oh, I missed some this eraser always doesn't always capture everything that'll just have to do all right so the way I'm gonna show that the point formula which is the one on the right is equal to the arc formula is I'm going to take the arc formula and I'm going to manipulate it a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the denominator and invert it and put it up in the numerator. You remember there's a rule in math if you have a over b 
divided by uh, AB divided over C over D. That's the same thing as A over B times D over C. Remember that rule? So I'm just going to apply that rule here. Think of that as A, and this is B, and this is C, and this is D. So I have Q2 minus Q1 over Q2 plus Q1 times P2 plus P1 over P2 minus P1. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to put the two expressions that the two differences together and the two sums together. In other words, I'm going to move this number over there and I'm going to move this number over there. So then I have Q2 minus Q1 over P2 minus P1 times P2 plus P1 over Q2 plus Q1. Now can you see that this piece right here looks like the slope. The slope would be the rise over the run and since P is on the vertical axis the slope would be P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1. So what we have is not exactly the slope. What we have is 1 over the slope. We have this. So I'm going to draw a little circle around it. 1 over the slope is exactly the same as that thing right there. So now I'm left with 1 over the slope times P2 plus P1 over Q2 plus Q1. Hey, I'm getting close, aren't I? Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by this weird thing, 1 half over 1 half. So if that's 1, I hope all of you can see. So I'm going to multiply through by 1. It won't change anything. And then I have 1 over the slope times P2 plus P1 over 2 all over Q2 plus Q1 over 2. Now if you take the two P values and you add them together and divide by 2, what do you get? You get some kind of average of the two P's and you take the two Q's and average together you get some average of the two Q's. Now I hope you can see that this thing, which we now have, is the point formula, and we started, we started with this. My work's a little bit messy, but if you start with the arc formula and you just manipulate it, you'll get down to the point formula, where the values p and q are simply the midpoints of an arc. So you'll see this again in another lesson when we actually uh, work some of these problems. And again, you probably don't need to know uh, any of this if you're in an introductory class. But uh, you, you could probably just memorize those three formulas. But if you want to know where they came from, uh, that's, that's where they came from. They're all related, even though they don't look like they are. All right, so here I am back. Some classes use uh, calculus. And if you know a little calculus, there's another way to write the point formula. It's not really needed, but uh, especially in an introductory class, but it does it is useful later. So the point formula, which was one over the slope times p over q, becomes a partial derivative of q with respect to p times p over q. So if you're given a demand equation, especially later if you have a real complicated demand equation, it's much easier to calculate point elasticity using the calculus than it is using that algebra formula. But for 99% of you, uh, the algebra formula, 1 over the slope times p over q will be fine. All right, yeah, so I just said, yeah, it looks, it looks harder, but it's not. Trust me, it's really easier. <laughs> OK, so that's the end of Understanding Elasticity Lesson 2. This lesson is really about the three formulas. And uh, the next lesson, Lesson 3, is a little easier. It's the total revenue test. And uh, I'm sure you're going to need to know that, too. So I hope uh, this lesson is helpful, and uh, good luck.